Director of Deadpool and Wolverine, Sean Levy, stated that he would love to shoot Deadpool 4 in the style of the third part, but this time with Tom Holland. The crossover of Wade Wilson and Peter Parker is a dream come true for fans, especially geek movies enthusiasts. However, how realistic is it? Will Holland's contract allow this? Will Kevin Feige be interested in the idea? And do we have any chances for the crossover of the century? Make yourselves comfortable, friends. Let's start with the fact that the very idea of such a film stemmed from Sean Levy's response to another question. Initially, Levy was asked if he would agree to direct Deadpool 4. The director, unusually for Hollywood, answered frankly. Levy confirmed that he has neither long-term contracts nor obligations with Disney and can say what he wants, and honestly, he doesn't know. According to Levy, on the one hand, Deadpool and Wolverine is the most technically and morally challenging film he has ever directed, but on the other, it is also the most creatively rewarding. With friends Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, it's paradise on Earth. Summarizing, Levy would love to direct Deadpool 4, but only under the conditions of Deadpool 3, with creative freedom and the ability to work with whomever he wants. Next, Levy was asked about a possible plot, and Levy stated that a Deadpool and Spider-Man crossover is a dream project that he would film without hesitation. Moreover, Levy is only interested in Tom Holland's Spider-Man. According to the director, Holland would run circles around everyone, and the chemistry of such a film would be incredible. It's not hard to guess that everyone loved the idea. After all, as with Hugh Jackman, Holland and Reynolds have a long history of relations. Holland, if anyone didn't know, had issues with alcohol, which surfaced during COVID when there was nothing to do in quarantine. In an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, Holland said that it was so serious that he even took a break in his career and decided to have a week of sobriety during quarantine, which was interrupted on Monday morning. Holland said that a whole box of gin came to him from Ryan Reynolds with a note that it was spider gin with best wishes from him. Reynolds constantly appears in Holland's social networks, starting from 2019. There he parodied the joke that he loves Holland 3000. Tom himself parodied Reynolds by congratulating Zendaya on her birthday with a funny photo of her. The story is, of course, not as deep as that of Ryan and Hugh Jackman, but still, the actors have a solid past and the recipe for Deadpool 4 with Spider-Man seems to suggest itself. Globally, there are two problems before the film. First, Sony has just returned Deadpool to Marvel, opening the possibility for a crossover. There are no details or even rumors about a new agreement between the studios. Knowing Sony, it's not hard to guess that for Spider-Man's participation in Deadpool, the corporation will ask for at least half of the revenue. More likely, they will ask why this Deadpool 4 exists at all and suggest making a crossover based on Spider-Man, splitting the profits as they did with No Way Home. Marvel received only a third of the proceeds, which obviously does not suit either Kevin Feige or Ryan Reynolds. His Deadpool brand is now no less powerful than Spider-Man's. Legally, even discussing a crossover will start a real hell, which can be understood in some sense. A billion in revenue for Deadpool and Spider-Man films separately is not a problem. But if they collect a billion together, each will get only 500, which is a failure at the level of Quantumania. Even one billion in crossover revenue split in two is the level of the first Deadpool's receipts. Why bother then? High notions like audience love and hype don't work in big business. They love only numbers. And the numbers suggest that if the profit is split in half, the film needs to collect about two billion. Only seven projects in the history of cinema have managed to do this. Can Deadpool aim for such a result? Of course, one of the mentioned seven $2 billion projects is No Way Home, the same crossover, but it's still a risk, and business doesn't love risk. Why should Sony bother for a billion in revenue when Holland's solo film will collect it anyway? From Sony's side, allowing a crossover might be influenced by No Way Home, because since the release of the film, the return of Garfield and Maguire has become Sony's ID fix. We've mentioned before that in discussions about Spider-Man 4 with Holland, Sony insisted on a new multiverse crossover, but Feige was against it because you can't pull off the same trick twice, and viewers won't be pleased with repetition. Deadpool is that very detail whose addition to the project makes the return of Garfield and Maguire not far-fetched. It will no longer be an attempt to repeat No Way Home, it will be its own crossover with Deadpool, which looks fresh and, most importantly, fits perfectly from a plot perspective. Toby and Andrew went to their universes, and it is precisely through multiverse jumps that Deadpool is currently engaged. To make another multiverse story about Spider-Man in such a context is not a problem, and in general, it can claim not just two, but more billions in box office receipts. 
The only trouble is that Sony is not the main problem for the hypothetical Deadpool and Spider-Man. The main problem for the film is, ironically, Marvel. When they made No Way Home, it was the end of an era, and the development of the multiverse was gladly approved as a hobby. Now times are different. Kevin has his problems, the cinematic universe is in ruins, and first of all, something needs to be done with its characters and only then help Sony and make crossovers. Deadpool in this context is the Jesus and savior of Marvel, who Marvel plans to use to the fullest. This is not about Ryan Reynolds, but about Sean Levy. The director's approach to the multiverse was so liked by Disney bosses that they plan to include him in Avengers 5, and even if not there, then certainly somewhere inside the cinematic universe, possibly in Deadpool 4, but only with Marvel characters. The same crossover with Captain America played by Chris Evans can also aim for half a billion in revenue, but all this will be Marvel's personal receipts. If there's no difference, why pay more? This saying is more relevant than ever. And the saddest thing is that Feige can be understood. The multiverse saga is past its midpoint, and the multiverse is only beginning to smell, and this at a time when there are only two years left until the next Avengers. The situation is as if in 2016 Marvel had only failures, and before Infinity War, something urgently needed to be born. It's clear that Disney sees Deadpool as a savior, and there are still untainted characters in the cinematic universe like Loki, Thor, Doctor Strange, and a bunch of others. But again, it depends on the perspective. It's no secret that at one time they wanted to make Tom Holland the new face of Marvel after Robert Downey Jr.'s departure. Contract disputes with Sony prevented these plans, but if negotiations can still take place, everything can change. Since the 2020 scandals, Sony's triumphant plans for its cinematic universe, where Holland can be poached, turned into Madam Web and Morbius. The studio's appetites may well be reduced, expanding cooperation with Marvel and arranging a promotion where you get two Toms for the price of one. We're talking about Tom Hardy and his Venom. The third part promises the franchise a renaissance and Sony may give up its Napoleonic plans, returning to close cooperation with Kevin Feige. Thus, we have several scenarios for the future. The first, and most likely, is Deadpool 4 without Tom Holland. X-Force, Captain America, Thor, Daredevil a crazy number of characters can be stuffed into the film. Filming it will also be easy because Ryan Reynolds, after a six year break between the second and third parts, probably has about 30 ready-made scripts in his head. In this case, the release can be expected as early as 2026 before Avengers 5. The Deadpool franchise is famous for its quick filming and post-production. The only problem will be Sean Levy leaving to direct Secret Wars or Avengers 5. The second scenario is Deadpool with Tom Holland, but not in the fourth, but in the fifth part. This is probably the most likely option because by 2027, Sean Levy will have time to shoot the Avengers, Ryan Reynolds will get his fill of the cinematic universe, and Holland will return to it with Spider-Man. Each of these news events will make a lot of money, and already then, when everything settles down, they can take on a mega super duper crossover to surprise the viewers. The third and least likely scenario is Deadpool 4 with Tom Holland in two years. The most desired outcome for viewers is almost unreal, Partly because of contracts, partly because of Marvel's state, but primarily because of the principle of a little bit of good. Making such a Deadpool 4 will leave Kevin Feige with the question, what's next? The studio faced the same question after No Way Home and has not been able to come up with a worthy follow-up for three years. The same problem will be with Deadpool, so introducing him into Marvel will likely be done gradually. And X-Force is an excellent option that many fans have been waiting for six years. Reuniting Deadpool, Wolverine, Cable, and his friends in a separate film is also a crossover with a billion dollar claim, which logically follows the events of Deadpool 3, where Wade finally meets Logan. Such a film will not be a problem to shoot at all. Not even Sean Levy is needed. In 2018, Reynolds had a director in mind whom he can bring back with one call, and Levy can deal with the Avengers and make Marvel great again. And then, when the cinematic universe gets back on its feet, they can think about the incredible Deadpool and Spider-Man. What would you choose, X-Force or the Reynolds-Holland crossover? Leave your opinion in the comments, and that's all for now. See you until the next time.